Let's see what those little r's and t's we calculated mean for an interface in the string. So just to have them handy, if we're going from a medium z1 to z2, then the little r is z1 minus 2, where you're coming from minus where you're going over the sum z1 plus z2. And the little t, the transmission coefficient, is 2 z1, where you come from, over z1 plus z2. So they're not that hard to memorize. They both have z1 plus z2 in the bottom. Just r is the difference, 1 minus 2. t is 2 times z1. So let's look at a couple of cases and see what happens. Let's see. So let's imagine the case of going into a more dense medium. So in any wave medium, more dense usually means higher impedance. In the case of the string, it means we have a nice thin string here going to a thicker string where mu1 is less than mu2, and therefore the impedance of 1 is less than the impedance of 2. So let's see what this means. Um, for R, so if we have a pulse coming in, and we can ask what's going to happen to R. Well, if Z1 is less than Z2, that's always going to come out negative. Because we assume impedances are always positive numbers. Tension is always positive. Mass density is always positive. Square root keeps it positive. So if these are all positive numbers, and 1 is less than 2, Z1 is less than Z2, then it's negative. And that's going to be positive. So R is always going to be less than 0. And uh, so it'll always reflect back. And it, let's see, we could also figure out it's always going to be uh, greater than negative 1. Uh, right, so as big a reflection you can get is the original size. And that's the case where if you hit essentially a wall, like when we have our pulses hitting the rod or having it clamped in, that's like hitting an infinitely high Z2. So Z2, say Z2 is... 10 million, where z1 is 1, or something like that. This is minus 10 million over 10 million is negative 1. Right? So the biggest uh, 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 reflection you can get is negative 1, is to get the same pulse coming back. So let's see, that's r. Let's look at t. So what gets into here? Um, t here, let's see, you can see if all these numbers are positive, we know it's always going to be greater than 0. So any pulse that gets from this medium to this medium is going to be an upright pulse. If it was an upright coming in, it's going to be upright when it goes through. And let's see, it's always going to be that. And what else do I want to say? Oh, it's always going to be less than 1. Right? If this is a higher index medium, then z1 plus z2 is always going to be bigger than 2z1. So it's always greater than 1, and it's always less, or greater than 0, and less than 1. So you'll always get a pulse. Um, positive and upright, but always smaller than the original pulse, which you might expect considering it's going into a more dense medium. So the case then of going into a more dense medium kind of looks like this. It goes in, it bounces back with some smaller amplitude, and it goes in with some smaller amplitude. Something like that. Right? We can show you this. So that string I showed you, we tied one string to four strings to make a, a string interface in mu, just like this. And here we're going to show you a slow motion pulse hitting it. So there you saw it. Upright pulse comes in and it reflects back with a little bit of a low amplitude, and it tr continues in, transmits with a, with a lower amplitude. Let's go into a less, less dense medium and see what happens. Uh, let's think. So that would be the case <coughs> that we have a heavy string we're always coming this way, right? So mu1 is greater than mu2, therefore z1 is greater than z2. 
Well, let's see. What are we going to find out here? If uh, z1 is always greater than z2, then you're guaranteed this thing will never go negative, right? Because that'll always be positive. That'll always be positive. And if you're subtracting these two things, this will never be as big as this. So um, r is always going to be between 0 and 1. So 0 will be less than r, will be less than 1. Okay. So whatever reflection you get back will actually be upright, and it won't be as big as the original pulse. You'll always lose a little bit of energy because you'll always give some to the little string. That's what we'll see when we do t in a minute. But it can't ever be bigger because then you would actually uh, gain energy. Of course, you can't do that. So if we were to draw uh, that case, if you have a little pulse going in, it's going to come back upright, but usually a little bit smaller. And let's see on the transmission. Well, it's also always going to be positive, right? Because so all these numbers are always positive. Transmitted waves are always positive. They never invert. Um, and let's think if uh, Z1 is greater than Z2, then it's going to be greater than 1. Right? So T, so that means is the wave that goes into the lighter medium will be at a higher amplitude than the input wave. So we would actually want to draw that one like this. And it might look like you've, well, you have, it looks like you haven't conserved energy, but you have, because we haven't thought, talked about the energy in a wave for strings. Although this has a bigger amplitude, we haven't conserved amplitude, but you don't conserve amplitude, you conserve energy. So there's a bigger amplitude, but it's a less, it's a less dense string. So if we were to think about the energy, it, it would work out. Okay. So that's essentially what happens. This we can't quite simulate for you because my four times as thick string doesn't accept a wave pulse so well. My launching method doesn't work so well. But trust me, this is what would happen. Run it in reverse if you want to see it. So that's what happens at the interface of two strings.